Today's letter. Today's letter comes to us from little Janice. Little Janice writes, Dear George G., financial stress, money issues seem to be really crushing my parents. It's causing a lot of stress and anxiety. Can financial stress and anxiety actually hurt them? And if so, what can I do to help? Well, little Janice, I am sure sorry to hear that. Money can be really, really difficult. It's really hard for individuals. It's really hard for for couples, for married couples, for people who are dating, just people in a relationship. I think if it's hard for one person, it's even harder for two people to come together. And there's a lot of demands on us these days. So certainly not a surprising thing to hear. It's not uncommon to hear that we're experiencing money problems. And you are right to be thoughtful and trying to be thinking about ways that you can help them and things that can be done to address this because like most problems, it's not going to go away on its own. It needs to needs to be addressed. And these days we are so accustomed to treating the symptoms and taking a pill or injection to solve all of our problems instead of actually getting down to the root cause and trying to address that root cause, which is what we all know that we're supposed to do. This isn't groundbreaking stuff, but just kind of where we're at. So one of the challenges with money is that, you know, it touches every aspect of our lives. And it's not right when we go into one room in the house, that's when we feel it. It just follows us around from our work to our hobbies, to our family life, weekends on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Saturdays and Sundays and, and everywhere in between. And unfortunately, behind actual infidelity, financial matters are one of the leading causes for divorce in America. So not trying to ruin your day, little Janice, but money is ruining a lot of people's days these days. So what's the jumping off point? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. Financial stress can definitely hurt your parents. In fact, it probably is in, in way more ways than I think that we realize. It's causing more problems than just the fights that they might be having or the arguments that they might be having. Um, stress is a real thing, which I think that we all know, and anxiety, all these things can spiral into depression and just lots of really, really, really bad things. And that's what I want to talk about today is addressing financial stress and addressing anxiety, addressing potential depression, where it starts from, what it is, what can be done about it, all these kinds of things. So have you ever thought about what depression really is? Think about just the word depress, kind of push down, push, squeeze all the air out of you're trying to get the air out of a bag or something like that, you need to create a little bit of a break in the seal and push it all out, depress it all out, and then seal it back up. Just you take all the air out of something, and that's not a good thing. And think about some some synonyms for depression. There's a lot of them, you know, to oppress, to sadden, to, to burden, to worry, to trouble, to deject, to bum out, to bother, to weigh down, to torture, to concern, disturb. Distress, discourage, dismay, discompose, disquiet, freak out. What about some antonyms? What would you think some antonyms? So the opposite of what I just talked about, of depression. I would think that you're breathing life into it. You're, 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 you're pumping air into it. You're filling it up. You're lightening, you're brightening things up, you're rejoicing, you're stimulating, you're enlivening, you're invigorating, you're reassuring, you're booing, you're exhilarating. Man, those are way better. Those are way better words than those other ones. Now, what's so bad about stress and depression? Is it obvious? Just is bad? These are bad things. I think that that is a unanimous thing, that depression is a bad thing. But I don't think it's obvious as to what really is going on, what it is that makes it so dangerous. 
And one of those things is something called cortisol, which is a steroid that is produced by our adrenal glands, which are at the top of each one of our kidneys. And cortisol plays a really important role in a lot of our bodily functions, particularly in response to stress. So cortisol, they call it a stress hormone because it increases in response to physical or emotional stress. It is released by the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, the HPA axis, and it goes like this. It goes a little something like this. Our body perceives that we're experiencing physical or emotional stress. The hypothalamus releases corticotropin, <laughs> releasing hormone CRH. There is then pituitary activation. Um, then there's this adrenal response. So the all those words I just talked about, that travels through the blood screen, stream, goes to the adrenal glands, which then prompts them to release cortisol. There you go. Other factors that um, that, that release, it includes or it levels cortisol um, fluctuating throughout the day naturally just because of our circadian rhythms. Peaks in the early morning, gradually decreases throughout the day. Physical activity can influence cortisol. If we get hurt, that'll influence it. But it's doing a lot. Cortisol in our body, it regulates our metabolism. It helps regulate our blood sugar. Um, it helps with immune responses. It has a strong anti-inflammatory effect, suppressing the immune system to prevent it from overreacting. So that's a good thing. Helps with our blood pressure helps healthy um, maintenance and regulation of our blood pressure. Helps It helps us cope with, um, with that stress. And it also helps with our memory functions and cognitive functions, things like that. But the problem is when we have prolonged or chronic high levels of cortisol, that's when we start having negative or detrimental impacts to our body. So immune suppression takes place. So we are more susceptible to infections when we have sustained chronic high levels of cortisol. We gain weight, especially around our midsection. So if you're stressed out, trying to lose weight, you're like, why can't I get rid of this belly fat? Well, it's this high levels of cortisol going on in your body. Weight gain, hypertension, which is elevated blood pressure, hyperglycemia, um, similar to type 2, type 2 diabetes, can have muscle weakness and actual breakdown of muscle tissue. It can increase or decrease bone density, uh, increasing the risk of osteoporosis. It's, it, it hurts our moods, anxiety, depression, cognitive impairments, and it can lead to bad sleep. So cortisol is vital for managing stress and maintaining homeostasis, but that's the key thing is homeostasis. That's when stuff's going right. It's like you had a fish tank at home. When it's clean, homeostasis. When it's green, stuff's wrong. So proper management of stress and anxiety and a healthy lifestyle, that helps us to do that. So little Janice, how does this apply to your parents and financial stress? Well, it has an impact, significant impact on your cortisol due to its persistence persistent and often overwhelming nature. Like I was talking about at the beginning, follows us around everywhere. Money stress is like a rain cloud following us around or a big wet blanket that is just covering us all the time. So financial difficulties, it's really interesting. The same part of our brain that responds to mortal danger is the same part of our brain that responds to financial difficulty. So when you smell smoke in a building, part of your brain that's triggered and says, get out. Well, that's the same part of our brain that responds to financial stress. So um, that activates the release of cortisol, which we were talking about earlier and all those big medical terms that I was throwing around, sometimes correctly, sometimes incorrectly, that just financial stress is causing our pituitary gland to produce more of these things, which then prompts the adrenal gland to release more cortisol. So financial stress, unfortunately for many of us is a chronic thing. So it's not like it's short term and that 
it just releases more and more cortisol, which causes that chronic problems, that bad stuff that I was just talking about. So bad changes to our immune system, metabolic changes, mental health, there's all these problems, bad sleep, poor cognitive function, it's hard on our body. I mentioned hypertension and high blood pressure. Lots of really bad things. These are all really terrible things, super shitty. So what do we do? What do we do, little Janice? How do we manage financial stress to mitigate negative effects of cortisol, bring ourselves back to homeostasis? That's what we want. So in order to do that, it's essential to do simple blocking and tackling things. Now the word just the word simple just came out of my mouth. Nothing is simple about this stuff. It's really easy, but none of it's simple. Or maybe it's simple, but it's not easy. That's the better way to put it. This stuff is simple, but it's not easy. You understand that you're supposed to have a budget. You understand that you're supposed to look at your cash flow and manage everything. Have a budget, update the budget track my cash flow, balance my checkbook, all this stuff. Setting financial goals, planning for emergencies, having plans in general, having goals in general. These are super simple, but they're not easy. But this is how we're doing it. This is how we do it. If you feel like you are drowning and you are underwater when it comes to money and you are stressed out over it, go back to the basics. Create a clear and realistic budget. Set some financial goals. Start planning for emergency. Do not avoid looking at your bank accounts or your spending. Working with financial professionals of some kind can be a really good thing. You don't need to. But if you're not going to do this stuff, if you're not going to put a budget together, well, a financial professional can help you to do that. So it can be valuable. Totally up to you. Then just having a healthier lifestyle. I don't know what your parents are doing. I don't know what their lifestyle is like. I don't know what their nutrition program is like, if they have one or if they have any kind of an exercise program or strength training. But having a healthy, balanced diet, getting exercise, making sure you're getting enough sleep, that can really help manage your stress and your cortisol. Do they have support? If you can get your parents to have open and honest conversations about their finances with each other, with other loved ones, people that they trust. This can be a really powerful way to help alleviate financial stress. And that can be a really uncomfortable thing. I get it. But an important step, obviously, if people are experiencing depression, then there are many other important interventions that your actual medical doctor, medical professionals, counselors, therapists, um, those are people that can help. And a lot of the time, a some kind of a medical intervention can be a really, really helpful thing in helping people to deal with depression. So certainly involve and loop in your doctor, your medical professionals. So fundamentally, financial stress can lead to chronic elevations of cortisol levels. And that those have, which we've been talking about, really bad, really negative impacts on our overall health. So the more we can do the simple things, um, that's what I'm interested in doing. But let's get specific into what we can actually do. Um, or in terms of a list of priorities, I think that the number one thing that we need to do and why Uncle Dave, Dave Ramsey, is such an important person is he helps people move from red to black. That just means that when you're in, in the red, you're in debt. So you're behind. We need to get to the black. That means we need to get to even. So getting out of credit card debt, that's one of the keys here because credit card debt can feel inescapable. It is a huge cause of stress and anxiety, which can lead to depression, which leads to elevated cortisol and chronic cortisol levels in our body, which does all the bad things I've just been talking about. So get mad at it. Encourage your folks, play some Dave Ramsey in the background. We have a free get out of debt course that you can have access to, your parents can have access to, help you put a plan together for getting out of debt. But if you are experiencing financial stress, anxiety, negativity, feel like you're depressed, whatever it might be, if you can put a plan together, create a plan for getting out of debt, 
Might take you a couple of years, probably will, but you'll be on track. You'll be taking positive, proactive steps towards getting what it is that you want. And then, and while, while you are doing that, be focused on financial security. I want everybody to get what they want. I want you to be prosperous, to get rich, whatever you want. But we can't get there until we first find financial security. And we do that by getting out of debt, starting to pay ourselves first, which means putting our financial needs ahead of everybody else's, which is exactly where they should be. Just start putting some money away. Proactively save money for your retirement, for your other financial priorities. And then I want you to start working to get an emergency fund set up. People say three to six months. I say six months. Say so get six months worth of cash on hand in an account that's separate from your everyday checking account. Once you have that, once you're out of credit card debt, I think that that's financial peace of mind. Truly, take a deep breath, let the tension out of your shoulders. Lower those cortisol levels, for God's sakes. Then it's moving towards financial confidence. And that's a superpower for sure. When I'm confident, moving forward, standing up straight, got a little bounce in my step. I'm not depressed, full of life, full of air, full of possibility, full of hope for the future, all these really positive, virtuous things. It's what I want for you, little Janice. It's what I want for your parents. It's what I want for everybody. So the reality is, unfortunately, that financial problems can, in fact, kill us, can have a horrible impact on our lives, on our, our wellness, on our health, our relationships, every aspect of our lives. So the more we can do, the faster we can do it to get out from underneath the weight of financial problems, moving from red to black, finding financial security, then financial prosperity, finding peace of mind, then confidence. I think that that's the game right there. Thanks for the letter, little Janice. Hopefully this is helpful. Take advantage of the resources that we have, moneyalignmentacademy.com. Take advantage of the free goals course, create a compelling vision for your future, your parents in this example. So think about your values. That'll help you make better priorities, how you allocate your most important resources in this, in this example, money. And then finally, the program or the course on how to get out of debt can help you do all these things. They're free. How exciting. You can also get a free copy of the Purpose Book while you are there, which will help you to get clarity on all this stuff. So thanks again for the letter, little Janice. Finally, a friendly reminder, there's never going to be anybody more interested in your financial success than you are. So act accordingly.